Hello, this is Dr. Gay from First Sick MRI, and this is a 50-year-old female who had some minor trauma, and the wrist kept hurting, ulnar side of the wrist pain, so they did an MRI, and they also gave contrast into the joint, so we called it an MRI uh, post-arthrogram, and here we see contrast in the proximal carpal row here, and we see the lunate bone, scaphoid bone, trichetral bone, this is the ulna, this is the radius, and in this view, we're looking for the triangular fiber cartilage. And over here, we see the TFCC coming across. Now, right in the very central portion, we see the central disc here. And the central disc does not look normal. It looks pretty thick over here. It comes over to the cupped area. This is called the foveal attachment. And up here at the top, the styloid process, there's a styloid attachment. This whole area looks dark, so it looks like the styloid and foveal attachments are both intact, and they just blend together as one here. If we go off to the dorsal aspect, we see the dorsal band coming across here. It looks nice and dark and uniform. We go back to the middle cut. This is where we should see the central disc. It should be from right here to right here, but instead of seeing that, we see this bare area. So it looks like it's a full thickness or near full thickness tear involving that distal articular surface of the central disc. If we go towards the palmar aspect, it looks pretty thin there. One more, you can kind of see this gray band. So it looks like a, a tear, a full thickness or near full thickness tear of the central disc. It also goes a little bit into the palmar band. Again, that foveal attachment is okay, stylo attachment is okay. And this is a view um, where you can't tell, but this one you have contrast. So you can see contrast in the proximal copper row. It does not go into the distal radial ulnar joint. Normally, if you have a full thickness perforation this big, you'd expect it to go in here. So this may just be a high-grade partial or maybe it's just scarred and the fluid's not going in there, but at any rate, it looks like something that is a high-grade partial or probably full thickness tear and the contrast is not just going through it. But there's one other finding here. It is related to the abnormal position of the ulna. So when I start off, I always look at the distal ulna and say, is the, is the variance neutral, which means is the ulna a little bit shorter than the radius? So you follow this across the radius, and the ulna should be a little bit shorter, so there's room for that TFCC, but instead it's roughly at the same level. So we call this a positive ulnar variance, mildly positive. And when that's positive, it can impact with this bone, the lunate bone. And when it impacts with that, it puts abnormal stress on the triangular fiber cartilage here in the central disc. You get tears just like we have here. And also you can get bony changes in the base of the lunate. And if we look closely, we say, wait a minute. Yes, there are some subchondral cystic changes uh, of the lunate bone here. So this is a case of a mildly, or a mildly positive ulnar variance with a torn central disc of the TFCC and the bony changes within the lunate because it's impacting with the ulna. And we call this ulnar abutment syndrome. So a classic case of ulnar abutment syndrome with a TFCC tear and everything else looks pretty good and thank you very much.